the near certain is like the loser of this match is most likely out of topic contention. Yeah. So both players are going to be sort of very nervous and. Um, We've got uh, Koi Den over on Briar, who I know is, uh, has a few contacts in the French community. So shout out to Fab TCG in France. Uh, love your community over there as well. Yeah, this is, this is going to be interesting. We, uh, we saw, obviously, in the last round, the Briar, the Briar Mirror and uh, Tom picking that up with just an amazingly yeah. consistent deck of, of arcane, arcane damage that just ran the clock out on uh, Kiki. So it'll be interesting to see how, uh, how strong uh, Koi's uh, Briar deck is and uh, whether or not uh, Jack can, uh, you know, weather the storm of, <laughs> of arcane and, and, and pull off the wing. Absolutely, and we see a lot of some good sportsmanship, both players, a lot on the line, both shaking hands at the start there. I just want to run through the equipment quickly, so it looks like we've got the Ragamuffins hat and the um, Deep Blue over on the Oldham side. That's a beautiful hat. It, it is a beautiful <laughs> hat, and, and uh, on the Briar player side, we've got the Suede High Boots, which are very, very good, incredibly uh, strong for turning on something like Rosetta Thorn, that yeah. arcane damage can just be the clutch part in the late game, and we can see the uh, Cracker Jacks, which I believe is the one that gives plus one to your next attack. Yeah, and uh, the inter uh, interesting to see Cracker Jacks in a Briar deck, and I wonder if, I mean, obviously it's playable, but I wonder if it was more a pick of he, he, he didn't want an, an Olden player to pick it up uh, in the draft, so possibly possibly part, partly picked to to cut it off from from his opponents. Yeah, it is, it is quite cool as well for being able to hit those break points um, on Briar to turn on the embodiments of Earth, for example. Of course. So the Cracker Jacks can be quite good, but I think, as you say, traditionally might be seen slightly more on equipment, very good with things like Thump, for uh, yeah, example. Yeah, of course, of course. And we see, okay, so we're just right into it, so the we have the Koi on Briar going first, and it looks like just kicking things off with an... Uh, okay, so... Entwine Earth, is Entwine it? Entwine Earth, yeah, yeah, you are correct. So it looks like that shoes that's coming in for six. Now, I feel like Koi's not looking to push damage here, but being able to trade a blue card from your hand for two cards from the opponent hand, generally quite good. Yeah. Particularly against Oldham, which, you know, Oldham's a deck that can be very good at fatiguing people, so if you want, if you can get sort of a one for two trade for cards and deck, I feel it can be very strong. Absolutely. It is definitely a strategy that you have to be aware of with Oldham. Strength of Sequoia coming out. Um, Looks fuse, like fuse, fuse there. So Strength of Sequoia, very good for. So it's going to be giving the next Guardian attack a bonus next turn and that um, the Seismic Surge. And it looks like the hammer's just coming in for four here with a yeah. three cost card in the pitch zone. Yeah, just a solid, solid play here. And one good thing about the Seismic Surge as well is um, there are a number of Oldham attacks, things like Mulch, things like Thump, that cost four. Uh, so it's very powerful and that brings it down to three costs. You can just play it with one pitch card. Yeah, yeah. And of course, if if um, he does have Thump in the deck, that is a, gr is a great card to lead into a, a Thump turn uh, the following turn. Oh, exactly, with Strings of the Coy, that's yeah. a very good point. Yeah. Okay, so he's managed to draw out the Singeing Spellblade block there. Um, that's quite good because, you know, the less arcane damage you have to face down, the better. Yeah. Now, from what we've seen, it seems to be a bit more of an Earthbriar as opposed to sort of the more lightning-based deck we saw last game. Yeah, I mean, it, and that's quite possible. Uh, um, we we don't have uh, we don't have the breakdown of how many how many briars were on the table, but th this is what can happen in a draft if multiple people are drafting briars. Is that sometimes you do have to pivot to uh, the 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 slightly less um, you know. Uh, favoured, favoured uh, talent. Yep, uh, that's fair. And then we see the slow tomorrow, I believe. Oh, was that played from Arsenal? Yes. Okay, great. It so was. he gets to draw a card. Yeah. Now, so tomorrow, you know, getting the Entwine of Blue back is not the best thing in the world ever. I mean, it's an extra card back in your deck, but importantly, it's if you, uh, if there's one more non-attack action here, it will create that embodiment of lightning. And then we, I think we may see a Bramble Spark coming down. Yeah, nice. So this is critical because it gives the next attack go again, which will allow the Rosetta Thorn to come in for additional damage. Mm-hmm. Solid. And we are, as we pointed out on stream, um, so we've got two Sushi Night regulars. So that's the local game store hosting Nationals. Yeah. And I believe that might be a break ground coming through here. Oh, Ooh, a so lot of damage taken there. And we're going to see this followed up by a Rosetta Thorn attack, I believe. And I've just heard as well that Coyden would like to, as I mentioned earlier, give a big shout out to the French community. Yeah. Um, 
I hope a few of you t tuning in at this sort of late hour in your time. We really appreciate you. But already the live totals, look at that. With, yeah. right, with these explosive turns, 20 to 9. That, that, that is massive. I mean, um, but what we're seeing is hopefully uh, uh, Jack can uh, make a big swing back here. Uh, but yeah, that that is massive because as we saw in the last game, any any um, that arcane damage off Rosetta Thorn will just it just puts you on the clock. Absolutely. Oh, oh, that is a wow. lovely follow up. That is that is a great follow. -up. So this could swing it back back into a more even uh, even up. Oh, it is just a blue glacial footsteps, but still big. That's coming for eleven with dominate. Yeah. And you sort of you know turn to the briar player and say, I see your puny background, <laughs> and I'm going to raise you a dominated glacial footsteps yeah. for eleven. Yep. And it's uh, one thing I want to point out here, it's great that Winter's Fight looks like the card that's going to go into Arsenal. Really good card for the Arsenal, yeah. just to strip an extra card next turn. Sure. And he uh, does have two embodiments here, so it's not um, it's not as bad as it could be, but still a big, a big shift. Yep. And just to clarify for the chat, uh, New Zealand Nationals and Australian Nationals are exempt from the bands and errata, so that's why we see two embodiments of Earth here from the Briar player. Oh, yeah, so a big play coming down from Jack. You know, he's, uh, he's not going to go down without a fight, that's for sure. Yeah. Now, one thing is, it can be a bit of a dangerous game, can't it, playing this racing game against Spry, because as you mentioned, Ian, that arcane damage can just be really strong at closing out games. Exactly, exactly. I mean, and, and, and that's the thing, it's sort of like, even that early attack in the turn, they don't they don't mind you blocking it because it's just about setting up that Rose of the Thorn to, to get to get that um, arcane chip damage. Exactly, and I think we see I can't quite see it, but I believe in Koi's hand that might be a flash. Um, there's a flash, definitely. Because um, I think a flash into basically anything will set up sort of flash that into turning on Rosetta of Thorn. Yeah. So I wonder if the Briar player here may consider just saying, you know what, let's even up the life totals. So let's go down 9 to 8. Yeah. I'm willing to play that game. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, again, with so much on the line, this, as you said, it's, it's not... A it's not a guaranteed here, but you definitely want to be the, the person coming out with the win. So this is why these players are making the um, the uh, the tough calls and, and, and taking a little bit more time with uh, with how they block. Okay. Blocking with the flash. Okay, so playing a little bit safe, you know, you can't fault that. So they're yeah. just defending for four because of the embodiments. Yeah. Uh, so that will mitigate a lot of the damage there. And still maintaining that small life lead. Yeah, but it does even it up. It does even it up. Yeah, we'll have to see what, what Koi can make happen with a three-card yeah. hand here. Yeah. I can see a Singeing Steel Blade, which is very powerful yeah. for just getting those embodiments online if need be. But you know what's even better? How about an Earth or Surge into a Singeing Spell Blade? Wow. So that, I can't quite see the colour, but that is coming in for, by my calculations, quite a lot of damage. Yeah. So we see the one Arcane came through. I think those might be red and red. So it's coming in for, you know, probably up to nine damage or so. Mm-hmm. Oh, three three card block, uh, and then also the earth um, the earth reaction from the olden player. So just drawing up and passing back. And we'll see. Uh, one option open to Jack would be to just run out that winter spike to strip a card. But it looks like he may want to save that for a turn where he really needs it. Yeah. And you know I, I can't fault him there. Yeah, so like the game, uh, you know, these games can go very quickly, can't they? The tempo switches, it ebbs and, uh, ebbs and flows. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, especially changing, changing from classic constructed uh, uh, and, and going back into the, the faster draft portion of, of it. Um, there, there is something to be said about the um, mental uh, gymnastics that you have to do changing formats, uh, you know, going from playing your classic constructed to drafting your deck to playing playing the draft and then going back to your classic constructed if you're lucky enough to make that top eight. It's tru it truly is a test and, and the winner at the end of the day is going to have, uh, have, have well deserved the title of national champion. Absolutely, and we see Corey just... Uh you know, probably, you know, it looks to be slightly ahead, I'd say. Maybe a little bit favoured here, but, you know, you really need to keep the pressure on against these Olden decks, because one off turn, and suddenly you could be facing, you know, looking down the wrong end of another big glacial footstep, yeah. something like that. Yeah, exactly. And a good use of Soak tomorrow here, getting back, potentially, the Earth Force Surge. 
So we'll just see what he or, or the bramble spark. You know, mm. we'll just see what I uh, can't quite see the color there, so it may need to be the earth or surge. Yeah, and quite just checking himself to make sure correct color has been put in. That's good. Okay, so does he have the second on attack action to get that embodiment of lightning? Okay, it looks looks like the answer is no in this instance, and. I believe that's another break ground coming in for a bit of damage. I believe that's coming for six at the moment. And we'll see. Track Jack's trying to decide what he's going to hold on to. Throws down two cards. I quite like that here because I feel. Takes the two arcane, then blocks out. Blocks out the damage. Oh, and again. So th then we saw, sorry, just interrupt the suede hide uh, boots there. We yeah. see the strength of that because it allowed him to turn on that Rosetta Thorn to come in for the damage. Exactly. I quite like the way he pitched, uh, he structured his pitch there as well, just to guard against potentially getting ice reacted from Olam and not having the available resources. Yeah. So here we see, I think this is a really important turn. So we see the Winter's Bite come down to strip a card, and I feel like Jack here needs to try and either push a bit of damage or like force at least one block yeah it's very difficult to force block because obviously it's not going to be representing lethal damage mm, yeah. but the winter's bite is uh, very powerful here because you'd much rather be facing down a three and a four card hand against Brian. Abs oh absolutely absolutely especially with only uh six six left on the clock uh, um for for health for jack he he knows that's that's you know three four turns if he's lucky uh to, to get get the job done Okay, so we'll just see. We see another Singeing Spellblade in Nikoi's hand there, so it's very good at just chipping away that damage. Mm. And both players know, you know, one small misstep here and suddenly your tournament is uh, effectively over, so... Like, yep. it's a flesh and blood, it's a, it can be, it's a beautiful game, but it can be a punishing one sometimes. That's right, that's right. Uh, and, and, um... As we said, day two after a very long day one, uh, so you do have to be mentally strong to, uh, to to make it to top eight. Now, I believe Jack as well uh, in Classic and Shark did his little note. It may be the one Katsu player in the top uh, 24. I think that's correct. I may have that wrong, but uh, definitely looking to get it done for Katsu. Yeah. And it's also, as we said, two uh, local Sushi Night players, and it's a great... Um, just a great advert for um, how uh, inclusive the uh, Sushi Night team is. Really uh, doing a great job of uh, bringing the young, the young bloods into the game. Uh, and Jack, uh, Jack is uh, really, really proving that uh, it, do it doesn't matter what age you are, you can play uh, high level flesh and blood. That's absolutely right. Now we see just the rights for replenishment came in there. Um, I think it's accidentally been put into the equipment zone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just forcing out a bit of defense yeah. uh, from Jack there. I think that's was quite good because I feel Koi's doing a good job of just buying himself flexibility yeah. there. He's like, look, I can strip some cards from your hand and just see if I can wait to just like really push through with one of those classic Briar turns. Where yeah. I get the embodiment of lightning, I get the Rosetta Thorn going. But equally, Jack, on the other hand as well, being very careful, um, playing it safe, defending out as much damage as possible, yeah. and really making, making that hammer work. Right. Yeah, and uh, just to follow up, Sushi Knight is a really well-known New Zealand community for really getting those young players into the game. They've handed out hundreds and hundreds of decks to local high schools. They yep. run a lot of organized play, uh, put together events for young players. And, you know, we might see a little bit of that outreach uh, just paying off here with, uh, as you say, the youngest player in the tournament still fighting for, uh, for his spot in the top eight. Yeah. And might I say, playing a lot better than, uh, than I did when I played when I was 10 years old. <laughs> Jack there, doing a, doing a count of both decks, uh, you know, seeing whether or not fatigue is an option. But I mean, with only six life, um, you know, it's going to be it's going to be hard fought uh, to to go to fatigue here. Just with uh, with the Rosetta Thorn, he's going to. He, I think he's going to need to do something a little bit more than just try and block out swing. Yeah, it can be tough. Now, one cool trick that uh, Olden players can do, for example, if they Briar attacks him for six, um, the Olden player can defend with two cards for three and then preemptively pitch an Earth card to put up a two damage shield. Mm -hmm. uh, that will then defend out the arcane damage from Rosetta and you can still block it out. But the problem with relying on that is kind of everything needs to line up for that to go yeah. right. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
and your yeah, you, and your opponent doesn't doesn't have to uh, come in with a sw swing, <laughs> like if they know that it's going to be. Uh, Exactly. But I think you're absolutely correct, Ian. It might be a little tricky to rely on the fatigue game, uh, given yeah. the current life totals. Yeah. No real life. I mean, there, there's some life gain in this set, but I wouldn't imagine uh, uh, Jack's playing too much of it in, in a draft deck. And then we see Koi again just protecting the life title here. And honestly, I quite like this because Koi, we don't know what's in Koi's deck, but yeah. obviously he does. <laughs> so I think he's probably thinking, look, if I know that I have enough arcane damage to get there in the end, then why put myself at risk of just getting completely blown up? Because if you take four yeah. there, you can't kill your opponent, they come in with a red dominic laser of footsteps, and it's suddenly scary. you're yeah. shaking their hand and walking out the door. So. Yeah, no, it, it, it's smart smart play by Koi here. He just, just buying his time, he, he's got that, um, he's got that um, life point lead at the moment, um, and so can just play patiently. Oh, we see a Toon Timber in, um, in the arsenal for Jack. Plays it out. And fuses it to get the extra, the extra yeah, defense. Perfect. And I believe that's a Glacial Footsteps in hand. Yeah. If he's able to play that, even just without the Dominate, this will be a really good chance to take the tempo back on the deep. There player. we are. So he is going for it. Yes, lovely, lovely. This this is a this is a play that could turn the match uh, back in his favour. Yeah, now uh, an excellent use of deep blue there to get the resources he needed. Yeah, and that one is coming in. Unfortunately, I can't. It's quite a see yellow. That. I believe it's yellow. So. Yeah, so it's coming. So it's not a forced block. No, uh, but you're thinking. You know, at yeah. this stage in the tournament, Koi's a little bit nervous about just yeah. living that through. Yeah. And this is great because if he is looking to the, play the fatigue game, this is just as strong, you know, dominated or non-dominated here because, you know, he's thinking, you know, if I can get my opponent to start defending with three or four cards That's right. in multiple it, turns. And it just, if you can if you can get three cards out of the hand, it's, all, uh, you know, that the threat of the Rosetta Thorn is, is a lot less. Um, and uh, again, at some point, Jack is need will need to push damage, but he he's not going to be unhappy just seeing uh, uh, you know one or two card hands being played back at him for a couple of turns. And one interesting thing here, I'm sort of noting from Koi's hand is the blocks are a little bit awkward here, so you can you know defend for five with two cards, still take a bit of damage, and it looks like all he's going to be able to come back with is a entwine earth blue. I, I actually sorry, I can't see that rights replenishment in the arsenal. So one option here, which she seems to be eyeing up, is potentially defending this for five, coming with that arsenal card, and then arsenaling the flash he has in hand, thereby setting up a great sort of strong turn. Strong, excuse me, everyone, because setting up a very strong turn in yep. the not too distant future. And there we are, six apiece. Just like that. Now, I hope. For Oh, okay. Sorry, I miscounted the resources there, but this play, this is why these players are playing Armour yeah. Commentary. That is much better than what I was talking about. Yeah. Um, so we see here the Flash coming in for the action point, yeah. the Rights of Flinchman coming for six, and now he's down to four life. Yeah, taking, taking Arcane, and uh, down to four, and all, all he can do is uh, Arsenal and pass. And then we see, we can already see the arcane damage that's starting to stack up here. There's that arcane yeah. shockwave, which does need fuse for that. Yeah. Is that a thing of sorcery I see as well? Uh, it could be, yeah. Wow, yeah. okay. That could this be very, is, very that, dangerous. Yeah, that, this, uh, this could spell the end for, for Jack here. I wonder if he's going to play it now or try and save it. We'll have to have a look. Because obviously, like, one option is he can play something like the Sending Subway to take his opponent down to three. Yeah. Um, and then maybe look to try set up that Sting of Sorcery in the Arsenal. Uh, but his hand is a little bit awkward because he's got that Rejuvenate there. He probably doesn't want to be stuck with, like, a lot of cards he can't use in hand. Of course. So I would completely understand the Sting of Sorcery play here as well. It is tempting, though. It is very tempting to save that Sting to set up, like, a, a big go again attack and come in for the win. But we'll see. I think what he really wants to do here, at minimum, is force out at least one card um, from from Jack's hand here. You know, mm. Preferably two. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Here we are. So we are seeing it. It's two arcane damage. Okay, so that's definitely going to force out one card. Is that another Glacial Footsteps in hand? I believe it is. Mm. Makes so, an embodiment. 
in this game, I feel it's going to go down to the wire here. Because yeah, if, it's very close. If, if Jack is able to play this close to your footsteps next turn, that is going to force out, I believe, at least one block. No. I have one. Okay, so we're seeing a, a like the snow one just coming up to defend it. And, okay, we'll see what Jack is able to follow up with. He's definitely in the danger zone now that you have to say. Oh, there you go. Rejuvenate, one of my favorite cards. I love this card for exactly this reason. It's so, so good because that has basically counted three arcane damage yeah. things in the situation. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is big. That, that, um, that's bought him at least another turn. Because if he did not have that, we can see there's a Bramble Spark and a Singing Cell. So he was facing down lethal damage next yeah. turn. So, well, you know, Jack is keeping in this game. Yeah, hanging in by his bootstrings. You know, the, uh, the young Oldham has taken a trip to the Fountain of Youth and he's feeling a little bit healthier now. So one thing, I really like this card as well because it can heavily disrupt your opponent's game plan because they might be thinking, look, I've got X amount of damage left in my deck and suddenly if they have to deal with another three or potentially even more life, depending on what's going on, uh, it can really throw you off. Obviously Rejuvenate, very good with things like Turn Timber, being able to fuse and play at instant speed, but hey, not too shabby playing this uh, spot as well. Yeah. So here we see the Bramble Spark. I'm not sure if he's able to fuse it here. But again, you know, just the relentless arcane damage coming down. Another Singeing Steel Blade. Been leaning, been leaning hard on that, um, that card uh, in his deck, and it's and it's been doing some work. It's great. Even the blue card is very yeah. good as well. I feel yeah. great card. Defense for three. Uh, the critical part's just that arcane damage that it deals. Yeah. So he gets the two embodiment here now. Jack, three card hand. Oh, I can see another turn timber in the hand there. And there's and the footsteps. Yeah, nice. Now there are two embodiments, so this may not be as powerful as it would otherwise be. Yeah. But this should force out at least one card, which is yeah. um, definitely what what Jack needs to do here. Yeah. And again, hard to tell from our view what color that is, but um... Because this is actually, if that's a red, this is potentially, in fact, if this is red, this is a two card block. Yeah. And that's massive. Our uh, helpful viewers zooming in, I think it is a red, it is. Wow, okay, so that is, that's a two card. This is quite a big momentum shifter here. Mm, mm. Three cards, that's big. You know, one one small step for Jack, but one uh, giant step for his future in the corner right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, he's still on some thin ice on three damage, but uh, um, but yeah, get, if he can, if he does, if he can get Koi to uh, commit three cards to this block, it's gonna. There's a lot of cards that defend for two there as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's why. That's why so many. And I think no non-attack actions. Yeah. This is just. I mean, that, sometimes it's just the luck of when, uh, uh, you know, the how hands line up, and, and this has really, really helped Jack. Um, yeah, because I think players were starting to get through to the next cycle of their deck here. Yeah. Um, so that's a Valor Flash coming in. That is going to... Ooh, that's another Glacial Footsteps we see here. Now, unfortunately for Jack, he's not going to be able to get away with the a fused one here because no. he will need to defend with one card. Yeah, of course. Turn Timber, taking one damage. Okay, so he's put himself in the Rosetta Thorn Danger Zone here. Yeah. He's probably pretty confident that... Yeah. Know, I believe this is a blue this time. So, but even for eight, that's still going to take two cards. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, and no embodiment this turn, of course. Honestly, this has been a fascinating game to watch. I'm really enjoying it. I think it's, this is why, like, I actually really, really, really enjoy this draft format. One of my favorite ones ever, uh, because well, I think both players are noticing how many cards are left mm. in their deck at this point. So, you know, life total is important, but also that it's only one resource of many in Flesh and Blood. There's that earth, so one, two, three, five cards left in deck. One, oh, two, wow. And I believe that's four, about seven, yeah. oh, eight, nine for the olden player. Yeah. And at this point, Jack is probably well aware of what's coming up next from yeah. stacking this game. Yeah. So, 
McCoy may just start to feel it slowly slipping away this game. Yeah, again, Jack's done a, such a great job at um, setting up these late, late game glacial foot steps um, to really just put on the pressure to... Well, and that's another one. Is he able to fuse this? I'm not sure if I can see an ice card, but fuse or no fuse, this may be enough to get through just through stripping the cards. Wow, this, this is quite a turnabout. Again, these, these glacial footsteps being more of a glacial sprint in the, in the last few turns than, that, than footsteps. Um, you know, global warming, all ice caps, all that stuff. Um, <laughs> this is big. You know, we, we, saw, we saw the olden player was... Uh, was struggling a little bit in the early game, but you know you want to walk a mile in their in their shoes, take a few footsteps here and there to bring yourself right back. Yeah. This is, I believe, Jack did pitch stack this uh, for the viewers asking um, yeah. because they're down to the last few cards in the deck here. Yeah. Now, one positive thing here is for Koi, so he goes down to one. He does have that arcanic shockwave, which will force at least one card out of hand. Yeah. Or actually, although it's a thorn. Yeah. But that's just that's something that's going to get one card out of hand because it is just it's just coming in for two, no arcane. But I think he's only got two cards left in deck. I think this yeah, one might be over. Yeah. And that's an entangle. That's coming down for four. That's two cards. Yeah. And. And that's, that's it. game. That's it. Extending the hand. Fatigue. The style. <laughs> Jack does it. Wow. wow. That is, that is, um, and that's, that's a really interesting play. We, we, I mean, I, I said, uh, you know, a few, you know, a few turns ago that uh, fatigue may not be an option, but uh, he, he did really well, again, setting up that just stampede of glacial footsteps um, uh, was massive for Jack, um, being again the two to three card blocks out of Koi, and Koi could just never get that final, that final turn to uh, to knock out with Rosetta Thorn to, for the last two arcane damage, and again, reduce a card that a lot of people yep. have uh, have uh, downplayed as not very good it really was the was the game turner it was the card that that won jack the game here by allowing him to survive to uh, to set up his um his end game absolutely i mean i've drafted a, a fair amount of oldham and rejuvenate is honestly one of my favorite cards that i prioritize very highly in that deck for exactly this reason because you don't want to be at the mercy of Hey, that a Briar player, let me just count how much arcane damage I've left in my deck, and you know what? I'm going to win the game in about eight turns' time. The Rejuvenate, I think, really threw. I feel Coin may slightly regret playing out that single sorcery just a little bit early there. Yeah. Very understandable at the time, but uh, looking back, I might be yeah, thinking. He didn't have that information. It, it, like, exactly. it, it, again, he played with the information he had, um, uh, and he did he did kind of take his foot off the gas a little bit, um, and, and yeah, no, Jet. Jack um, ever ever present and and uh, stayed until the end and, and got it. That is that is, that is an impressive and that is a great lesson for for uh, new and old players is that these games are not over until the last bit of life has has uh, has been eliminated. Uh, absolutely, because I've seen people talk here and there about saying there's no null and barrier. It's a bit of a mistake, but you know, hey, who needs an arcane barrier when you can just gain through life with rejuvenates? It's uh, and, <laughs> and, 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 as a brute player, I just respect the, uh, you know, the, the just I'm going to hit him harder. I'm going to knock the arcane out of him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I just want to give a huge congratulations to Jack as well, our youngest player in the tournament. Yeah. Lives to fight another round. Yeah. Um, again, for those who've just tuned in now, I want to give a big shout out to the French community uh, who, you know, quite explicitly said, can we show them yeah. the above? And absolutely we can. Yeah. And... Yeah, and so they can be very uh, proud of Koi, um, again, doing very well uh, to get to this point of the tournament as well. So, uh, so well done, well done to Koi. Um, but yeah, no, Jack, Jack uh, lives to fight another day, another round. Uh, his his um, his hopes for top uh, eight are still alive, and. Uh, yeah, no, it's going to be exciting. And of course, with one round left to um, to go and draft, I, I'm guessing we're going to pod three next round, are we? We'll, we'll have a look. So we'll, we'll see what's going on um, in the pods to the final round. But what we will probably look at doing is getting some potentially winning in games. So we yeah. want to try to get a couple of players probably on X and three. Um, yeah who, if they win their last round, they've got a very good shot at the top eight. And again, I want to say like some masterful pitch stacking from there from yeah. Jack. Cool, calm, collected, you yeah. know? Yeah. Say, hey, we're not playing CC, but that was triple C right there. Yeah. And that was, uh, 
And just to let everyone know, the top eight will be classic constructed. So just one more round of draft. Yeah. Um, all right. I think before, just before we uh, take a quick break, I'm just going to run through very briefly, like the OP Pro 